yeah in today's class uh, first we will solve a, a problem concerning uh, steady state conduction in a cylindrical geometry namely nuclear fuel rod and then we will go on to uh, solving a one dimensional conduction problem in a spherical shell which is very much used in uh, transport of liquid nitrogen liquid oxygen and so on. So in tomorrow's class we will start with transient conduction and two classes tomorrow and day after tomorrow we will try to finish transient conduction whatever is possible right. So please take down this problem, problem number 45 a long cylindrical rod a long cylindrical rod long cylindrical rod of 80 millimeters radius long cylindrical rod of 80 millimeters radius consists of a nuclear fission material a long cylindrical rod of 80 millimeters radius consists of a nuclear fission material within brackets k equals 0.6 watts per meter per kelvin k equals 0.6 watts per meter per kelvin generating generating 30000 watts per meter cube a long cylindrical rod of 80 millimeter radius consists of a nuclear fission material k equal to 0.6 watts per meter per kelvin generating 30000 watts per meter cube uniformly throughout the volume uniformly throughout the volume the rod is encapsulated the rod is encapsulated with a tube the rod is encapsulated with a tube the rod is encapsulated with a tube having an outer radius of 160 millimeter the rod is encapsulated with a tube having an outer radius of 160 millimeters and a thermal conductivity of 4 watts per meter per kelvin the rod is encapsulated with a tube having an outer radius of 160 millimeters the thermal conductivity of 4 watt per meter per kelvin the outer surface is surrounded by a flu fluid the outer surface is surrounded by a fluid at 80 degrees 80, 80 degrees celsius the outer surface is surrounded by a fluid at 80 degrees celsius and a heat transfer coefficient of and a heat transfer coefficient of 20 watts per meter square per kelvin and the heat transfer coefficient of 20 watts per meter square per kelvin determine the interface temperature determine the interface temperature determine the interface temperature and the temperature at the outer surface of the tube determine the interface temperature and the temperature at the outer surface of the tube ok. People who came late I will draw the figure it is steady state conduction in a cylinder from the figure you can figure out what we what we are trying to seek ok. So there is a nuclear fuel rod it is generating heat uniformly at the rate of 30000 watts per meter cube. So this material has a thermal conductivity of you are having a outer sheath ok there it is encapsulated in a tube to protect it or whatever right so this material is having a k of 4 watts per meter per kelvin four huh? did i say four okay now i have given you the radius radii So steady state one dimensional all the heat which is generated from within is transported across to the boundary goes on to the tube and is picked up by the fluid on the outside. The fluid on the outside has got these conditions ok. 
So, this what we are doing is essentially called nuclear thermal hydraulics, it is very critical for a nuclear designer, I was talking about the Fukushima plant and all that right. So, anyway once the criticality is reached it will a fissile material will continue to generate heat, but the challenge is as a heat transfer engineer you should be able to pick up that heat, so that the temperature does not reach dangerously high levels where it will melt and lead to core meltdown and other issues right. Now, the problem is pretty straightforward. Now, if you see I am not asking the temperature within the nuclear fuel rod, okay. we are looking at two temperatures, the temperature here T 1 and the temperature here T 2, right. so we are interested only in the two temperatures. Okay. So, there is no need to solve for the conduction equation from the center onwards, we can use the relationships which we develop for heat conduction in a cylindrical shell or an annular red in an annulus R 1 and R 2, right. We can use the concept of resistance, correct. Okay. There are two resistances, suppose there are two resistances here, right. So, here the temperature is T 1, here the temperature is T 2, here the temperature is T infinity. Please look at the board it is T 1, T 2 and T infinity, we can write we can write the relationship for Q equal to T 1 minus T infinity divided by the sum of two resistances. What are the two resistances? There is a conduction within this sleeve or the tube plus there is convection here. So, when you write that T 1 and T infinity, T infinity is known all the other things in these resistances are known H everything is known. Now, this must be equal to Q. So, if you have to find out T 1 you need to know Q, but Q is not such a great thing that we do not know, Q is Q, Q can be determined by using energy balance. After all whatever heat is generated within the volume has to be taken out by the, so it is a, a so it is an intelligent, it is a problem where you have to intelligently use your fundage. First get the Q by simple energy balance, declare that the same Q is going throughout and then equate it to Q for a cylindrical shell, get the temperature T 1. Once you get the temperature T 1, the temperature T 2 can be straight away obtained. Is the problem clear? Let us work it out. Now, first the Q across the rod is given by I have not given the depth in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the board, what should we do about that? 1, we just take 1 meter. Okay. Is this correct? 30,000 watts per meter cube into pi by 4 into 0 0.16 because R is 8 centimeter, D is 16 centimeter 0.16 into 1. Oh, is it clear? Okay, just, just give me the values. Kausthup, you do not have calci? Ah, some start working. Right. 602.9 watts per meter. Okay. Watts per? I can use watts per meter, what is that per meter? Ah. Yeah, R 1 itself is 160, do not get confused, radius, yeah pi d square is 1, Deepak, <laughs> in fact when I worked out in the morning I also did the same thing, <laughs> okay, yeah, but you have to be alert, okay, so this is the same, this Q is now equal to so i will call this k1 k2 huh? 2 pi is this correct Agreed? 
there are only two resistances conduction across the sleeve or the sheath or the tube convection from the tube to the outside this heat is coming from the center it is coming from that volume yeah now if you do that R2 is 0.16 correct. So, what is T1? Huh? Is it? Yeah, 126, right? 126. 126. 126.6. Just check this value. Vikram, is it okay? No calcium. Ah, take it, take it, take it. One twenty six point six. Okay. So this is basically the this this is what I call as the interface temperature, the temperature between the nuclear fuel rod and the and the sheath which surrounds it. Okay. That sheath may also be kept for structural reasons. When it starts doing the nuclear fission, suppose it disintegrates. Okay, fine. Now we will have to get the other temperature. That is pretty straightforward. H into ninety-six. No, one ten. Okay, so. Here is a problem where the Q is known, but the temperatures are unknown. Vikram, is it okay? Uh, ah, yeah, 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 of course. What happened to area? Yeah, yeah, into yeah, I have already done that. Okay. If you have to solve the equation and solve individually for the inside, outside and all that will be much more difficult, much more involved. This is a very intelligent way of solving it that is using the electrical resistance network. So, the resistance network we are able to use even in a problem where there is heat generation because from the heat generation we are able to calculate the heat flux or the heat transfer rate and proceed further. Now, we will add some spice to this problem. Now, you all of you got these two temperatures. Now, suppose I put a rider and say determine the center temperature of the nuclear fuel rod. How will you do that? Determine the center temperature that is critical that center temperature must be far below the safe operating limit. It should be less than the creep temperature which anyway must be much less compared to the melting temperature is not it. What not one? Ah, what is that? You have to write the governing equation. You can't do any tricks. You have to write the governing equation for one-dimensional conduction in a cylinder with heat generation. Now you don't have to worry about boundary conditions because one boundary condition is T1, which we just determined. The other boundary condition is dT by dr must be equal to zero at the center. That can be taken as either the maximum temperature occurs at the center, or it's also called what is known as the finiteness of the temperature, finiteness condition. Why is it called finiteness condition? That will be apparent as soon as we get the general solution to the problem. Okay. Now, let us do problem number 46. Determine the center temperature, problem number 46. Determine the center temperature 
determine the center temperature of the nuclear fuel rod discussed uh, sorry determine the center temperature of the nuclear fuel rod considered in problem 45 determine the center temperature of the nuclear nuclear fuel rod considered in problem 45 okay let's do that Correct. You can get the general governing equation, remove all the unnecessary terms. Unnecessary terms are rho Cp dt by d tau, d square t by dz square, d square t by d theta square, those two terms are all gone because t is a function of r only. That is the important point. Okay. Now, we have to get the solution to this. Now, Oh, I made a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, A, B, two constants, two boundary conditions. Now, very simple. At the center, at the center, R tends to R is zero. Okay. If R is zero. Unless A is 0, we are in trouble. Okay. Therefore, because R is 0, A has to be 0. This is called the finiteness of temperature, or you can say that any plane at R equal to 0, it should be symmetric on either side of R. So, the maximum temperature will occur at R equal to 0, that is where the, the, the area is becoming so small, the, the temperature will peak there. Okay. So, dt by dr. is equal to 0. Therefore, from equation 4, therefore, What about B? At R equal to R one, right? T equal to T equal to T one. Okay. So, now I will do
so t equal to t1 what is b Yeah, yeah, did I complicate it further or it is okay by 4 k yeah just check I can call it as a I can call it as an equivalent temperature difference correct because this q v r squared look at this term please q v r squared by 4 k will have the units of Kelvin that is the temperature rise which is caused by the heat generation. We can also call it as a dimensionless heat generation parameter okay. Huh? It is not dimensionless but it is Kelvin. Kelvin, hmm. you can make it as a dimensional heat generation parameter by divide, dividing by T infinity or something. Okay, it, it, it's a temperature difference, so you can divide it by T infinity and make it the dimensionless heat generation parameter. Okay, so call it uh, uh, eta, xi, whatever. Right now we'll work out the temperature T center at T at R equal to zero equal to 126.6 plus R1 was what 0.08 correct 0.6 how much was it 0.08 So, if you recall this T1, please look at the board. This T1 was decided by the ability of the outside heat transfer coefficient to take away the heat which is generated by the nuclear reaction. But this T depends on how much of heat is carried away by convection, but how much of but how much temperature rise is caused because of the finiteness of the thermal conductivity of the nuclear heat generating material. If the K is very high, you do not have very big issues. The controlling resistance will only be most of T will be contributed by T1. If K is very small, most of T will be contributed by the second term. So, there is a conduction convection coupling already happening in, in this problem, correct. But in a nuclear fuel material, K will not be under your control. R also we cannot make big rods, maybe 20, this itself is too much. Normally, they will have 20 or 30, and QV also physics people will tell you what is QV, right? When one its criticality and all that. Therefore, as thermal engineers, we can control T1. How can you control T1? By circulating that fluid and this thing. Then you can put some sleeve. You do not want to put too much of sleeve and act because you are, if you are putting a sleeve, it is an impediment to the transfer of heat. But that sleeve also gives you protection, structural protection. So, there is a trade off. So, there is a multi objective optimization framework there. Okay. So, these are the issues. So, you have to be and uh, you cannot, you do not have the luxury of repeating experiments in sodium and all that 1 is to 1 scale model. So, sometimes nuclear heat transfer is also called, you can just juggle the letters and call it a unclear heat transfer. <laughs> Okay.
if somebody wants to write a program to solve this uh, spheric uh, conduction in a sphere or cylinder, it will be a challenge to determine the temperature at the center in a finite volume method. Only if you write your own code, you will realize that. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Now, we will before winding up a discussion on steady state conduction in one dimension, we look at a spherical shell which is which has also got a lot of practical applications, right. So, let us look at a What are the equations? <coughs> Theta by plus by r squared sin theta is it do by do theta of ah sin theta okay then plus r squared sin theta ah do square t by do phi square do phi by k ah yeah. so t is a function of r only we will put a k here Oh, I have a k there, is it? Then we will take this off. What did we write? No, no, it is dou by dou r of r square dou t by dou r. k is here, it is correct. Hmm. T is a function of r only, so this term knocks, gets knocked off. 1D steady conduction. And now I do not have Q V, so it is very simple. Okay, so again we will start with one. correct hmm. Hmm. T T equal to minus a by r plus b so you get the ln of r for the cylinder we get 1 by r for the sphere okay now we will have to substitute let's take a spherical shell K R one R two let us say let us take a spherical shell of thickness R two minus R one 
at r equal to r1 temperature is t1 and r equal to r2 temperature equal to t2. Even if you do not know directly, we can get it indirectly exactly in the same way as we did for problem 45. Okay. When do you think such problems will arise? Okay, so, uh, do you, you started work uh, operating a power plant, you got so much of nuclear fuel waste, you want to dispose the fuel waste. So, you will put it into a spherical mass, then you will put stainless steel all that and put a canister, then you will pull, uh, bury a deep, bury deep down and put it inside. Okay. Now, we will have to find out what will be the temperature in the outside, as far as we are concerned as thermal engineers we want to find out the uh, temperature outside and all that. Physics people will be interested in what is the radiation level, they will take a meter and find out what is happening over time, how the radiation. But as far as we are concerned, what will be the temperature on the outside or I am taking a spherical shell, I am uh, for example, I want a liquid nitrogen or liquid oxygen for my PSL we launch and my liquid propulsion systems uh, uh, LPSC okay, and the fuel this may. Uh, I am making the fuel in Mahindragiri or Valliyamala and Trivandrum. So, I am, I am taking a truck and transporting the fuel from Mahindragiri to Sierikota. I am putting it in a spherical container. What will happen is, you have to have cryogenic temperatures, liquid oxygen is at 90 Kelvin, outside is blazing now, today it is very cool, but <laughs> it may be 40 degrees centigrade. Now, there is terrific heat leak inside, because of which this oxygen will get converted to vapor. So, then you will have you need a vent and slowly the oxygen some liquid will be lost. So, you will have to find out suppose this journey takes so many hours at the end of the day how much is how much of liquid oxygen will be lost. So, you turn around and say let us say 2 kgs per day is alone allowed. If 2 kg per day is to be allowed what should be the thickness of the insulation that is engineering. Okay. So, this is a very practical problem. Right now, so what we started out with very innocuously with some mathematics, we can apply to some hardcore engineering problem. Right, so let us. Uh, I'll give you the example now. We'll take a liquid oxygen and a spherical tank and do that. Now, T1 minus A by R1 plus B okay, therefore. Correct. So, what is A? This is also ok, but 1 by R2 minus 1 by R1 will be negative. Huh? This will be negative. No, I, I did something there. I did something there Vikram, I took care of the minus sign no, I did not make a mistake right, ah. okay. now B, so T1 by R1. Eh? Correct. Is this correct? Okay, therefore.
yeah yeah somewhere which is minus which is plus huh so b will be t1 plus that is minus that is minus this is minus yes sir why okay okay then b will be plus very good so everything is plus then we are in trouble this is it maybe i made more mistake is it okay yeah at r equal to r1 t equal to t1 system manager at r equal to r2 yeah so this is 1 by r1 minus this minus 1 minus 1 is fine okay looks good okay now what is q minus 4 by r r1 square k dt by dr at r equal to r1 this is also equal to minus 4 pi r2 square k dt by dr at r2 agreed because the same heat which is going yeah it's fine now yeah r to square second is it okay following hmm now let's take uh, k dt by dr at r equal to r1 so q equal to what is dt by dr let's keep this so this term will get knocked off so it is minus 1 by minus 1 by 1 by 1 minus 1 by r squared there is already a minus 1 here so it is plus r plus 1 by r r1 r1 gets cancel 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 is minus r2 is greater than r1 therefore the denominator is negative i already have a minus sign so q is positive i am home i have no problem okay therefore So what is this? What is this? What resistance? Shell, Shell resistance. Conduction resistance. Okay. Therefore, this is okay now if you have a situation where there is a spherical shell and i have h1 t infinity 1 k r1 r2 h2 t infinity 2 this q will be the same as
So, you can add the numerator separately and the denominator separately and using the dividendo, dividendo component or rule, if you add the numerator sep separately, denominator separately, the resultant expression will also be equal to Q, okay. Therefore, adding NR and DR numerator and denominator. Okay, you can draw this like this. T infinity one. So R convection inside, R conduction, R convection outside. Now you can keep on adding sleeves of varying radii R2, R3, R4 with different materials K1, K2, K3. You can have a composite spherical shell which is made up of several materials and then which has got a convective heat transfer coefficient on the inside and also a convective heat transfer coefficient on the outside, okay. Please take down this problem, problem number 47. A spherical tank for storing liquid oxygen, a spherical tank for storing liquid oxygen, a spherical tank for storing liquid oxygen on a space shuttle, problem 47, a spherical tank for storing liquid oxygen on a space shuttle is to be made from stainless steel. Is to be made from stainless steel of 80 centimeters outer diameter, 80 of 80 centimeters outer diameter and 5 millimeter wall thickness, right. Liquid oxygen is contained inside, the thickness of the wall is 5 millimeter, it is a stainless steel shell. Boiling point of liquid oxygen is 90 Kelvin. Boiling point of liquid oxygen is 90 Kelvin. Latent heat of fusion of liquid oxygen, you call it fusion or you want to call it vaporization? Latent heat of vaporization of liquid oxygen is 213 kilojoules per kilogram. The latent heat vaporization of liquid oxygen is 213 kilojoules per kilogram. Huh? Is it okay? Yeah. The tank is to be installed in a large compartment. The tank is to be installed in a large compartment. whose temperature is, the tank is to be installed in a large compartment whose temperature is maintained at 240 Kelvin, 240 Kelvin. Design a thermal insulation system, determine, design a thermal insulation system that will maintain oxygen losses design a thermal insulation system that will maintain oxygen losses due to boiling, below 1 kilogram per day, design a thermal insulation system that will maintain oxygen losses due to boiling below 1 kilogram per day. K 
of S s is 15 watts per meter per Kelvin, K, s is, K of S s is 15 watts per meter per Kelvin, a foam based insulation, a foam based insulation with K equal to 0 0.05 a foam based insulation with K equal to 0 0.05 watts per meter per Kelvin, a foam based insulation with K equal to 0 0.05 watts per meter per Kelvin may be used. Okay. So, this problem is adapted from Incro Pera and Dewitt because we are on air. <laughs> okay, this from Incro Pera and Dewitt, just uh, you can use the final formula right away. right? So, first get the Q heat transfer losses 1 kg, 1 kg per day how much will be the Q, first I will calculate the Q. Okay. Then this use this formula, use this formula the H1, H2 these are not there, right. but you will have 2 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2 by 4 pi K1 plus 1 by R2 minus 1 by R3 divided by 4 pi K2. K1 is the thermal conductivity of stainless steel, K2 is the thermal conductivity of the foam material. Okay, all the things are unknown except R3. Okay, so you will design a, you will design the insulation thickness. Okay, now let's complete this. So consider everything is well mixed on the inside and outside, or the resistances associated with them are so small compared to the conduction resistance. In all our question papers, we will say make reasonable assumptions with justification, right? If nothing else is given, what do you do? We cannot say that data is not there, I cannot solve the problem. <laughs> okay, right. So, 47. So, what will be the Q? So, 213 kilojoule per kg into 1 kg in. 24 hours. Please remember it is in kilojoules per kg. So, therefore, Q it will give you in kilowatts. So, Q will be how much? 2.465 2.465 kilowatt. Why? Two point three watts. Yes, watts. Watts. Okay. Mm. So this will be. I hope the values are meaning meaningful. No, no, let us write the first. Yeah, now tell me Vikram, what is the problem? Huh? This one, heat leak. Two point four six five too small. Huh? Very small, then there is hardly any. Two hundred and thirteen kilojoule per kg should be all right, isn't it? It looks like reasonable. Everything looks reasonable in this problem. <laughs> so maybe insulation is not required, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we just completed. 